welcome back to another video, guys. I am here with Pavel, who is one of the students inside the Six Figure Accelerator program and a great contributor. He shares a ton of wisdom <laughs> on everything he's learned from growing his agency in our community, yeah. which I get value from. And I know so many other people message me already saying, wow, this guy knows a lot of stuff. So I've got him on today. We're going to do a quick little short interview, really just to see what he has learned over the last kind of you've probably been running your agency for how long now it's like over a year right yeah i've been running my agency for about a year and a half almost two years now wow awesome awesome and, yeah. and just before this you know we were talking about just like the sheer volume of clients that you've served mm -hmm. in that time span which it's a big number and we'll obviously get into all of that right now and to you pavel thank you for hopping on man yeah thanks adam thanks for having me on it's always a pleasure here you know to uh kind of give feedback um, cause I know a lot of the guys kind of, you know, look forward to these. So, uh, yeah, more than happy and, you know, thanks for the be on. Awesome, man. Awesome. Cool. Well, let's kick it off with, you know, the type of clients that you serve, right? Cause I know you guys do a few different things. I think it's web design, a bit of social media. So do you have, you know, one set niche that you're currently working with, or has that changed many times over the last two years? Well, I can tell you that over the last two years, it's changed <laughs> dramatically <laughs> because like initially when we started, um, so what I have, it's a partnership between, you know, my partner and I, mm -hmm. he's been running an agency for, you know, 15 plus years. So mm -hmm. then, you know, we got together and we're like, Hey, you know, let's open up an agency in Florida. Mm -hmm. And we did. So it's, you know, it's my agency now or our agency, I would say. But um, so back then when we started, what happened was we kind of just copied and pasted everything that he was doing mm -hmm. into ours here. The nice. problem with that is it was like literally drinking, you know, fire from a water hose because I had no <laughs> idea. And then he's just throwing all this information and all this stuff at me, right? All, the, all this wisdom. And I'm like, can you slow down for a second? Because like, <laughs> I'm definitely overwhelmed. But, um, you know, slowly but surely, uh, we got into like bigger businesses. Um, I don't know. Did you know Macmillan? Macmillan? No, never heard of them. So, so they are a very e extremely big worldwide distributor company. Like they make books, applications, stuff for kids. And, you know, mm -hmm. they, they're like a, a distributor, as I think is it uh, the word. Like, I'm not sure. It's like if you have a book. And you're a really well-known uh, writer or so on. Mm -hmm. You will go to them for them to oh publisher. That's the words. You would go to them so they could publish your book, right? Um, and they also deal with kid stuff and all that. So we had them as a client, right, for an application development, and that was seven thousand five hundred dollars right there. Wow. Uh, we also had another client where um, it was a if I remember right, it was like fifty pages on a website design. And the guy was doing stuff for like an oil company or something. Yeah. So, you know, we were getting clients like that for all those big chunks of money. And, you know, we were just growing rapidly. I mean, really mm. to the point that like literally we were hiring people left and right. And um, but yeah, so going back to the, the niche, we started with just very broad everything mm. and anything, because I mean, honestly, yeah. when it comes to marketing, anybody can profit from it right mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. what ended up happening was is like we started noticing that it was kind of hard to keep up with because everybody has a different approach everybody mm -hmm. needs a different i don't know service in a way yeah, in a yeah, sense right definitely. so to scale it makes it hard right because you have sure, way sure. too many moving parts and the the point is that you're not able to duplicate Right. Mm, because yes. you always have something new, something new, something new. It almost it almost became almost like a la carte system mm. where we had a new client. It was like, oh, I need this. I need that. I need that. I'm like, come on, work with me. Right. <laughs> but um, so now what we're doing is we're actually just really niching down so that we can reach, you know, a specific audience. And, you know, if, if when I was talking to I think it's McCarty. Um, from the group. And I told them, listen, the good thing about scaling is if you do it once, you could do it again. And yes, guess sir. what? Yeah. It takes you away from actually having to do the work. And that's mm -hmm. why I love your program so much is because it goes into the whole idea of get a job, get somebody to do the job and then do it all over again. Right. Yeah, Which, man. um, 
you know, with nationwide and everything, we've gotten down to a couple of things. You know, we've been looking into like realtors, um, beauty brands is one thing we were looking into. And, you know, your, your program basically goes about beauty brands. Um, and there's a whole bunch of things. But initially, you know, it was all very, very broad. And then we just kind of brought it down to, you know, just to two to three niches. And, and that's what we're testing right now with this whole outreach. Awesome, man. Awesome. And you touched on some of the key points that I obviously mentioned all the time, right? Like you said, of yeah. when you're starting and like, this is how most people start. It's exactly what yeah. you did, right? It's you just take anybody in because when you're a new business, you want all the cash you can get, right? You're not going to exactly. turn someone down. Yeah. If they're going to pay $8,500. You're going to say, <laughs> yes, come on in and I'll serve you. Yeah. But again, it's, it's like a short term that works. Yeah, you get the money in. But yeah. when you're trying to scale, like you mentioned, it's very hard to duplicate your systems, your hiring processes, your outreach system, all of those things, it'll get you to a point. But trying to scale to 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever number you want to pick, right? Even if you want yeah. to pick 100, 200K, you get there in the most profitable, efficient way by yeah. building systems, duplicating exactly. what you're doing and having more of a product less of a service so that it's more just a thing that you can repeat and just deliver yeah. over and over again. So um, it's awesome that you're going through that, man. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a crazy process, right? Though, because you go from yeah. just being able to take any clients to, you know, we had a period definitely in my business where there was times where we just had to decline people, you know, they might've been referred yeah. into us and they didn't fit our niche or like they were just that little bit too far out of it. Yeah. Like, look, sorry, like we're just not going to take you on. Even though they had the money, they were ready to pay. Mm -hmm. It was just due to the complexity that it might cause. So I think it's good that you're going through it. And um, I know we've talked a lot about, you know, automations and systems before between oh, yeah. <laughs> me, you, Ty, and other people in the program. So I'd love to get your input. Um, what have you built out? Like, what is one of the best systems or automations? That you've mm -hmm. built out that either makes you money or saves you a, a boatload of time so one of the things is i'm always looking for automations as you know you've known yeah. you know the text <laughs> message i keep going about automation but um so the thing is my mentality is if it even saves me five minutes a day mm -hmm. that's five mm -hmm. minutes a day multiplied by 365 times a year yeah. so at the end of the year it's not five minutes it's actually a lot of time yeah. so if yeah. i can put something in place to just automate a little bit if i can automate getting somebody's email getting someone's name or you know whatever it is then i'm all for it right mm -hmm. because um i'm not gonna lie so before i joined your program i was doing everything manually we were you know uh setting up um uh, what's it called excel sheet so we could do uh reports for clients and mm -hmm. i still have all of these where it literally shows line by line how many followers they've gotten how many visitors you know have gone to the website how many clicks i mean literally it was exhausting because you have to get all the information and then put it in one place mm -hmm. then i was introduced to ig blade and i'm like where have you been this last two years you know so it's some of those things are really what make my life a lot easier. The other thing is uh, it, it, the, the one biggest thing that I definitely implement in it, it, it works tremendously well, is being able to track VAs, right? Because I, I, we have talked before, right? A lot of VAs, you know, you, you get to, thankfully, I got one of the best ones where she's able to think and follow directions and just kind of help out in general. Mm -hmm. But the majority of years that you get are the ones that you literally have to tell them how to do it, when to do it. It's like literally teaching a toddler, like this is how you do it. This is bad. This is good. Right. But, um, but yeah, so tracking their time has really been an, an, a, a time saver for me uh, because I use an application. Um, I've left it on the group. I, uh, it's called Plutio. And uh, it essentially takes everything, finance, text messaging, or not text messaging, but, you know, communication between clients. Um, it also takes you know, your finance, invoice, proposal, contract, um, timesheets in order to track uh, jobs. You can create task boards. And then it also gives a client dashboard, right? Where before, and this is a really huge time saver because before... Anytime a client had an issue, what we'll do? Email or text mm -hmm. message. And then here we are trying to look 
ask the developers, hey, what have you done with this? The client is asking about this. So, you know, keep me updated. And then, okay. And then it goes to the client. And now I'm like, all of that is out the window because obviously what I've done is with, by, you know, getting this automated platform, what it does is I can create all the tasks, everything for the developer to do. But then at the same time, the client is able to see all of this. If they have questions, they can just put them on there and immediately the developer and myself will get it and we can just answer, right? Love if we have something to report on, they can get all the answers they need right there. Another issue I used to have is like, okay, we need to create a Google Drive, put all the content and everything for the client to update, right? Or give feedback on, you know, approve and mm -hmm. so on. <laughs> now I don't have to do that, right? Because the problem is if you send the email, the client is like, well, I don't have time to see the email. They probably get hundreds of emails a day, right? So I've been able to automate all of this task and everything in just one place. And it's literally made my life a lot easier. Just the simple fact, and this is huge too. The simple fact that now I don't have to worry about invoice because I can just set it up automatically and it goes every single month. I know you say in the course, you can do it on Stripe too. But the fact is, you know, Stripe can be a little bit tricky this platform makes it a lot easier. And I'm like, okay, make recurring subscription. Boom, put the client's information. And every time they log into the platform, they can see it. Your bill is coming up. This is how much you have to pay. So there's no more reminding. There's no more telling them, hey, knock, knock. When, you know, hey, where's my money, man? Kind of like Stewie. <laughs> But um, yeah, auto, literally automating all of this stuff. It's literally taken probably any, I'd say anywhere between 10 to 20 hours off my back, right? Because all of this stuff we used to do over a period of a month, weeks, you know, sometimes during the day because it just came up and now I don't have to worry about that, right? I don't have to worry about managing anybody. All this stuff, it's already there. I need to pay, just click pay, you know? So it's, it's awesome. really good. That I'm all for good, automation. Man. Let's go automation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, man. No, I love it. Love it. And like that, there's tools that I use, right? That you mightn't use, but if you can just get all those tools in one, like 100%, makes sense to yeah. use it, man. Um, because all of those things you've mentioned there between like recurring invoices, right? Uh, tracking your VA's time, like all of those things, they may not seem important if you're just starting out. Yeah. If you're watching this, right? You got one client or you maybe you don't have any. You're probably thinking, yeah doesn't doesn't make sense right like all that time right. building these systems it's gonna like you said it's only gonna save me five minutes a day but it's that compound effect exactly five minutes a day on 50 different tasks like you said times it by 365 that's a lot of time so you know yeah. if you're just starting out okay you don't have to go into this level of detail right but yeah, as no. <laughs> you start to get clients in you have to start you know changing that mindset from i'm yes. going to do everything to like you said how can mm. i get someone to find the job, get them into it, give them everything they need, like a clear blueprint of how to do it, A, a to Z. Yeah. And then that's how you scale, right? Because you're never yeah. going to be able to scale if you, if you always want to do everything yourself or if everything is just manual in your business, you'll get to a certain point, right? You might be able to make six figures, but if you want to keep building, keep scaling and keep growing while putting your headaches down, right? Reducing those yeah. headaches, you're going to need to do the automations. Um, yeah. And so my next question is, so what's your services, right? You guys have done a bunch of stuff, right? You've, you've experienced with a load of things, slightly mm -hmm. lower ticket, massive high ticket deals as well. So if you were to look back on all the clients you guys have served over the last two years, what would you say is your personal favorite service? So it could be the most profitable service. It could be the easiest one to automate, or it could just be the one that makes you guys the most revenue, whatever it is. I'd love to hear. Yeah. So I think my favorite one, because obviously it makes a lot of money and I don't yeah. have to do yeah. anything. <laughs> um, but I, I do know what it takes because, uh, you know, I, I come from a, uh, a coding background and I, you mm -hmm. know, I used to work with Microsoft with, um, you know, Azure and, you know, I went through an academy anyways. So I do know what it all entails to make applications. Right. Mm -hmm. But I love it because people are willing to pay so much for it. Right. Um, this, this other one like Macmillan, that was $7,500 and, you know, for an application for a book, uh, that they just released, I think. Yeah. They, because we finished the job a couple of months ago and they still had a couple of months to wait until that iteration of the book came out. Mm -hmm. uh, so they should have just released it now. 
but you know that was creating a flash game for when you go to a website and you know you play around and it gives you codes and you know rewards and whatnot so web web development not web development um like application development my favorite one easy to pitch and you make so much money off of it however the problem becomes is trying to find that client because not everybody's trying you know it's able to shell out seven thousand five hundred mm-hmm. or eight thousand five hundred right um my least favorite is website design i hate it honestly well i it's kind of like a love hate relationship right like this person here they wanted a, a 50 page website i'm not doing it right but i kind of feel bad for my developers because obviously that's a lot of work but like this was a good example obviously because you know they had the money they they had you know they understood what it goes into the development but the reason why i kind of dislike website you know development it's, it's because normally the types of clients and people that you get are they don't have a lot of money they don't have a lot of budget so they're just trying to start from the ground right and then they're trying to get you to build like a, a 5 10 website you know page for 250 bucks or no 300 bucks i'm like where do you live like that doesn't work no you know? way, like, no way, that man. doesn't even pay for the developer <laughs> um but yeah so that's my least favorite and then uh, i you know along with the application i think one of the other ones that like i, I can truly speak to and i really like and enjoy is social media right um the aspect of marketing and just being able you, you know me and my analytical mind being able to take certain responses and say okay why did they respond this way and why this work but that didn't work and why is it that you know like this sort of campaign is not necessarily producing the results that we want and what do we need to change like what is it that makes this work but you know it worked on monday but it doesn't work on tuesday and it's i mean it's every time i answer a question i give myself like 10 more questions and it's just it's continuous but but you know what it's progress right yes sir and and the the one thing you mentioned earlier and i'll kind of reiterate it's when you start off, the problem a lot of us run into is that we overthink, right? We're always going into this issue like, you know, hey, he's using this platform. Let me, let me get into that. Hey, he's using this other platform. Let me get into that. Thinking that you're going to be happy once you get there, once you get the platform. But that's the farthest thing from the truth. You don't need to have the platform. When we started, I mean, from where I started to where I am now, it's definitely been a wild ride, right? But I can tell you for a fact that when I started, I didn't have all the tools that I have now, right? When we, when, when we started, we were doing everything manually. I was just doing proposals on, on Adobe, um, you know, and sometimes I was just doing it on Word real quick and then saving it to PDF. That's why I told Kate, <laughs> because I used to do it, right? You just mimic the invoice, you put it on there. They need to know what they need to know because they're already ready to pay and then send it out. It's not fancy. Do, the, do you really think they're going to care what the invoice looks like? They don't, right? Because you've yeah, already man. sold them. You literally, yeah. you could send it in a piece of newspaper and they'll be like, oh, this is funny. Oh, here's the money, right? 100%. Now you can't really do that with really high, you know, paying clients because they're really yeah. like, come on, what, what unprofessional kind of BS is this, right? But the point is to start off, you can start off with just a computer and a, you know, Word doc, without having any systems why because i'll tell you why it's all about the experience right you can read 20 books and you'll be a master after you read the book but guess what until you actually get your hands on and start doing it you'll never have anything right Mm, so instead of overthinking stop that stop overthinking and start doing it stop thinking you need 20 tools to automate something why? Because you don't know how the business works. You don't know how to do the certain things. So instead of just trying to, you know, it, it's almost like having fears, right? You fear this might happen. You fear this other thing might happen. But then it happens and you're like, oh, that was not at all what I was thinking, right? So, you know, yeah, to go back, you don't need tools. You don't need anything. You could just do it yourself. I mean, I'm able, I'm at a point where I'm able to use these things and, you know, makes my life easier yes but you have to understand it took a long time to get here right 
all people see is success. They don't see the tears behind it. hundred <laughs> percent, my man, hundred percent. There's so many nuggets you just dropped there. I'm, right? trying, to, I'm trying to like re- recollect them all. Like, <laughs> even, even that little thing you mentioned there of like how an application client is a dream, right? But a web design client is like, no go. You don't want to go there. Whereas in my mind, right? Because I don't come from that background. I would see the two and I would be like, oh, they're the same thing, right? If it's an app, it's very similar to a website. But again, that just shows you, you never know till you actually do it. Until you serve a client and put that experience into practice, you may find a completely different thing. So um, yeah, I completely agree with you. You know, you don't need all the tools. You just have to do the basics. And that's a really good point with the invoice, right? Because people think that they're like, if the invoice looks bad, it doesn't look too shiny right or fancy they're gonna not pay me it's like well if you've done a good enough job on your zoom call your phone call or wherever you spoke to them they're gonna sign up they're really not gonna care what it looks like of course like you said if it's a seven eight thousand dollar client put in the effort right spend the 20 minutes make it look good it's gonna be the best roi you ever make Um, but if it's just a small enough client for social media management or facebook ads you know, you don't need a fancy proposal. And as well, it's, it's not really representative of the service you're going to give, right? Because mm-hmm. if you're going to do Facebook ads, well, it doesn't matter if your proposal looks good or not. Like that doesn't determine if you're good at the Facebook ads. So yeah. keep it simple, guys. Keep it super, super simple. Uh, we actually have a quote from Nathan in the program. He says, keep it stupid, stupid, simple. simple. Yeah. yeah. And he always says it. it just resonates with me all the time because like you can apply it to your outreach, your sales, your invoices, your services, Mm -hmm. like literally everything in your agency. It's like, just keep it so simple. Your sales call does not have to be the crazy complicated thing that you think it must be. It's just you sitting down like we're doing right now. And it's asking a few questions, asking questions, give a bit of value. Do you think you can help them? Awesome. Be honest, pitch them and go from there. You know, and it's like the agency space can get very complicated as a beginner. It looks very confusing. And like you said, shiny object syndrome is going to hit you at every Mm -hmm. stage of the journey. You're Mm -hmm. looking at this video now and you see us, we're talking about systems, automations. You're going to think I need them. It's like, no, you you, you really don't, right? You just have to put in that groundwork, Mm -hmm. get your first client in and take your experience, whatever took you a lot of time, caused you a lot of stress and was just a waste of your time now build a system now do it from that so tons of value in there man and in terms of like with those services i'd love to just get some feedback what are like the general profit margins you've seen across all of those so when we take the app development let's say web development and social media what are your average profit margins because the profit margin we have kind of always shot for my agency which is content creation and social media focused is about 70%. For us, that's always been the sweet spot. It's healthy, Mm. not too high, not too low. And it's what we've stayed consistent with. But I'd love to see what those others are like. Yeah, I I, I just want to touch one thing right before we go Mm, to that. Um, You did mention with the outreach, right? And and just keeping it simple and so on. As you have noticed, I kind of like to talk. So when we go into like sales calls, I need to tone that down. Right? Mm, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, the yeah. other thing. Cause I've seen a couple of people ask this in the, in the, in the group, like, Hey, how do I answer to this? Or, you know, how do we go into the, the sales call? And, you know, I'm super nervous and this and that. And honestly, stop talking literally, so true. which yeah. is hard for me because mm, I'm the yeah. type of person that you ask me something and I tell you everything you need to know, but unfortunately it overwhelms people. Yeah. So yeah. when I'm on sales call, this is not what you see right here i'm excited i'm talking about this all this stuff but on sales call i literally just shut up right i let them talk my biggest entry question is always and i think I always keep it is like tell me more about yourself what your goals are your company and then what are you looking to do right and you know it's along those lines i always come up with different variations but it's the only reason for that is to get them to talk yes to tell sir. you your pain yeah. their pain points Tell you what the problems are, yeah, because once yeah. you know that, that's like 50 percent of the battle right there. And all you do is just literally answer what they just told you. Right. Love it, man. Love it. Um, that's that's your next sales call script. Right. Anybody. Right? listening? That's it. <laughs> one question. <laughs> Done. Yeah, right. That's the thing. Like if when I'm talking to someone on the phone, it's easy for me to just, you know, get friendly, you know, break mm-hmm. the ice, just just kind of make it, you know, in a, in a friendly environment. Right. 
But for me to go and be like, hey, Adam, uh, how you doing, man? I got something for you. I think you might, you know, your business can, you know, can benefit from. See, that's not me. I'm, mm. I'm like, you, you approach me. I'm super friendly. I'll talk to you. I'll do, I'll tell you whatever you want to know. Cause I'm, I've always been very, very um, transparent and upfront. Um, you, you know, I just like helping people. Right. I was there once, you know, why not help you get there too. Right. Um, but yeah, but me approaching people, that's why we made that, that, you know, group call, uh, group text, because I'm like, I'm having a hard time you know, telling my VAs what to do. And they're asking me, sir or boss, what do I do? I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, so no, going back to your, I just wanted to say that because like, I know it gets hard and intimidating, especially when you're trying to do the sales call and, and talk to people. And it's all here, man. Really, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. all here, right? You have to understand that they are a person just like you are. You're just talking to another person, whether they are the CEO, Right. Whether they are a janitor, what I tell myself is, so I'm prior military, and what I always used to tell my soldiers is like, listen, doesn't matter if it's the commander of the unit, doesn't matter if it's the commander or, you know, um, the, of the army, right? At the end of the day, that's another person on the other end. What makes the difference is the amount of experience that they have. So what I can tell you is treat everybody the same, whether it's the janitor the CEO, if you, if you treat everybody humbly and you give them value for what you're telling them, they will appreciate that more than you talking to a janitor, like, you know, downgraded, like, ah, this guy don't have money. Well, guess what? I've talked to janitors that have more money than I have. They just do it because, you know, they want to be around the kids or whatever. But the thing is, you know, treat everybody the same, be humble. And I can tell you, and just shut up. <laughs> and, shut <laughs> and, up. I yeah, yeah. You, right? and I can tell you that those sales calls are going to, you know, the outreach, especially on sales call, man, it's going to be a lot more profit from like we're getting upwards of almost 90 percent on, on on the applications right because you know we have the developers already right so when we charge seven thousand five hundred eight thousand five hundred almost all of that is profit because the good thing about application is it's a lot of it is copy and paste don't tell anybody i said that but it's you know it's it's the same base for everything right so a lot of the times is you know you see a project that has to do with um like a couple of ones we've done it's like service delivery right almost like doordash and uh what's the other one um instacart right it's essentially the same process so a lot of people want that type of application and all we do is you know we copy and paste we take the one that we've already done and then after that we just you know, putting the stuff that the client wants. Sometimes when it's from scratch, yes, that does take a little longer um, because obviously we have to do everything, everything from scratch. But it, on that sense, like the four developers that we have, I mean, it's, it's almost all profit as opposed to when it comes to um, web design, right? If you have someone hassling you down for 250 bucks to build a website or 500 bucks or... I mean, it, it's just really the return on investment. It's really not almost not there. So then the R, you know, the RI that we're getting back, you know, we're getting, I'd say maybe 20, 30%, which is still good. Don't get me wrong, mm. but it's mm. not above 45 to 50%, like normally what we look for, but the good thing. So what we do a lot is we get a client on the low end, right? We don't charge a lot of money to get them in. But then what we do afterwards is we upsell them on different services, right? Like, for example, one of the things we do right now, if we get a client for a website, right? We build the website, we do everything. Sometimes we'll do it cheap. And then what we do is we pitch them on website maintenance, right? Nice. And that in nice. itself covers for what they didn't pay and what they will pay, <laughs> you know? So it, it gives us a lot of return on that aspect. And then the other thing too, is for like social media, we get them on the social media growth, right? But then right after a couple of months that they've seen, oh, my social media account is growing. My followers are growing. You know, I'm getting more clients or you know, more engagement, whatever. Then we go to the next step, right? Which is, you know, do you need a website? Do you need, you know, more like actual ads, marketing, um, you know, just kind of go like that. And then for, for people that actually have like businesses, Right. We start with the social media. Then after that, we go into Google My Business. And then because we have uh, we have a platform that allows us to completely mitigate bad reviews 
and only allow good reviews to go in, in, into Google, right? So, I mean, it's a lot of things and all that, but honestly, it's the upsell. I mean, I don't know, the, uh, uh, what's the call? Sam's Club. I don't, I mean, obviously you're not here in the US, but Sam's Club does the same. What their idea is, um, when you go into Sam's Club, right, you get the uh, rotisserie chicken, right, that you can buy, I think it's like three or four bucks, but that's not what they get you. Right. You go for the chicken, but you come out with like 20 other items. And nice. that's yeah, where yeah. they get yeah. the money from. So then you have to look at it the same way. You go to Walmart to get a juice, but then you come out of there with like oranges and, you know, bread, ham. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you went in there to spend two bucks, but you came out spending a hundred. And that's the whole idea with upselling. Love it, man. Love it. And it's the same with an agency like you're doing. You get right. them in on the low end and you upsell from there. You know, it's something yep. it's something we've done quite heavily in the last few months where our base package now like is really low. Like when people hear it, they're like, what? Why are you not charging thousands a month for something? And it's like for us, yeah. it actually makes more sense to charge less at the start with a service yeah. that's like really profitable, very low headaches, and then get our client in for three months. And then if mm -hmm. they're easy to work with and we're getting them good results, we'll upsell them. Because what we found is that our upsell services take a lot of effort, right? Where there's a lot of back and forth with a client. Let's say it's full social media management or building out like a bunch of eBooks for them that they can yeah. sell as products. Those things take a lot of time, right? There's a lot of back and forth. So if we have a client that's an absolute nightmare to deal with, we're not going to upsell oh, yeah. them. Whereas oh, no. <laughs> if they're great, we can now choose to upsell them. So it just makes your life easier. Yeah. And with that, you actually collect more profits, which is what every business wants. So, um, right. yeah, it's, it's the goal, man. Um, and I guess, yeah, like a final remarks, you know, we've kind of talked, talked quite a bit there. We've gone through a bit of service. We went through yeah. industries, niches, a um, little bit on automation. Final advice. That's what I want to get. All right. So you've given the final advice, right? It'll keep it simple which I yeah. love, but um, yeah, yeah, let's just, let's just end it on a banger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, honestly, the biggest thing I can tell anybody, if you're waiting to do it, don't wait. Right. I know it sounds cheesy with the whole thing. Hey, take action, do this, do that. But look, if you don't do it, you know what the results are. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. nothing. But if you start doing it, at least it's progress. It's going to be slow progress, obviously, but the more you train your mind to thinking, listen, this is not a failure. This is just progress. Right. And I know that I did something today that did not work, but I can do it today differently and it's going to work. And even if it doesn't work, guess what? You've already found two ways that it doesn't work. Right. Look at all the millionaires and people who are super wealthy and stuff. If you ask them, how many times have you failed? They'll probably tell you more times than I can count. But guess what? Those are times that I know that something doesn't work, right? Yeah. You just need yeah. one to work. Just one, right? So like we say, without reach and sales, it's a numbers game. can you agree that it's the same thing with you failing, making mistakes? 100%. It's a numbers game. 100%. You got to keep trying until you figured it out, right? Put in the hard work because it's going to benefit you in the end, right? And it's one of those things that like, you know, I, I, I have this thing that I always tell myself, like, if I don't want to do something, I always ask myself, is this the lazy thing or is this the right thing to do? And that immediately gets me to do the right thing, which is to get up, you know, work out in the mornings or, you know, put my time in the agency and stuff. Because then I start thinking, you know, the lazy thing, man, if I just stay in bed, you know, for a couple more minutes, whatever, what is that going to do for me? I'm like, you know, screw that. Let me just get up, get a cold shower, get, you know, get up and running. But, you know, it's, it's this little things that you have to tell yourself and put yourself through so that it gets better. Because the only, the, the only true thing, right, the only true thing that is very consistent is that if you don't do anything, you get absolutely nothing. Boom. So go out there and kill it. <laughs> go out there and kill it. Love it, man. Absolutely love it. Um, so look, if you're watching this and you're watching this and you're one of our students, take action, all right? Make today the day exactly. that you do a load of yeah. outreach. You put yourself first and you you take that damn action. And look, if you're someone who's watching this maybe on YouTube, right, where you are not in the program, you've heard us talk about it a little bit, you know where to find more info, all 
I probably don't even have to tell you anymore. The link is down there. It's in the description. <laughs> if you want to join, awesome. We'll see you on the inside. And just know that you know, you're not just buying a course. It's something I, I try and make really, really clear to everyone, yeah. right? It's not just a course. Like, yes, there is a course in the program, but it's, it's this that you're buying as well. It's the two weekly calls that we have. It's the one-to-one -one communication. It's our group chat where we've got a bunch of people giving advice all day. That's what you're buying into. So if you want to be in that community where it's positive, motivating, and you're constantly sharing tips and strategies, we'll see you soon. And apart from that, yeah. Pavel, I want you to yeah drop anything that you want to drop, whether it's your agency name, anything else that you're involved with, just so if people want to connect with you, they have some place to do so. Yeah, definitely. So my current company, it's called Q8 Marketing. You know, it's my my name, my business partner's name, and then you know, marketing. Uh, we are rebranding to a clever agency. Um, you know, so if you guys want anything, again, you know, with the course, you're not buying into just the course, right? It's all of this, all the support and everything. And as you guys have seen, I'm, I'm always in there responding to people. Sometimes I'm <laughs> in between calls and I'm like, yeah, do this, do that. Um, but, you know, that's the one thing that I do appreciate because the problem with, with this now is that there aren't a lot of support. Everybody's trying to sell you something, but nobody's willing to help you or walk you through, right? So that's where the power of this really comes in. And I love it, right? Because I, I know, but I also, you know, get to give feedback and, you know, people, you know, I get to learn from other people too. But yeah, man, QA marketing soon, pretty soon. Uh, it's going to be a clever agency. Uh, if you guys want to check us out on the web or whatever, um, you know, just, hey, we're there. We got a lot of services. Just, you know, come and say hi. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, man. Love it. Um, so yeah, guys, we're going to wrap the video up there. I hope you got some value. Hopefully you got to, to laugh and uh, maybe you got some notes even taken down on some things that you can yeah. implement. So uh, Pavel, thank nugget. you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for hopping on, man. And, um, we'll be speaking very soon and to everyone else, I will also see you very soon in the next video.